Hello again and welcome to this teaching. We are now Galate chapter 2. We are going through the chapter 1, the verse 1 until 5. And we saw last time while Peter yet spake those words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, all of them which heard the word. You believe in him and you receive salvation. Who was the them that the narrator was spoken about? The Gentiles, of course, because we saw that the, the message was taken to the Gentiles. Now those Gentiles got the Holy Ghost by believing or by faith. The Holy Ghost came upon the Gentiles not by water baptized, but by faith. God has two different ways of salvation in the book of Acts. One most to the Jew, and they have to be baptized in water, and one that for the Gentiles, we have nowadays baptized by faith and receive the Holy Ghost. We continue this teaching. My name is Brigitte Balmy for Paracletus. Act 10.44 says, Those Gentiles got the Holy Ghost by believing or by faith. So the Holy Ghost came upon the Gentiles, not by what baptized, but by faith. We see over and over and over again, when Peter was preaching to the Jew, the emphasis is on the name of Jesus and believing in the name. Paul, when he just started his ministry, told the people the name of Jesus, but then the emphasis is on believing in what Jesus did for you. So it's a main difference between Peter and Paul. Peter was preaching to the Jew and saying, believing in Jesus Christ, believe in who he was. And in other, uh, in other word, he was saying, he is the Messiah and you must believe. This man you killed, Him, he was again, believe, believe in his, in his name. He is the Messiah. That's what was preached to the Jew. But there's a crossover to Paul now. And when he went to the Gentiles, the message wasn't who was Jesus, but as much that they, they can trust what Jesus did on the cross as long as they trust it. But trust what Jesus did? Trust what? The gospel. Because the gospel is what Jesus did. It's what can save us if we believe in it. If we believe that in the, the, the death, burial and resurrection, that's the gospel. Jesus died for what? For who? For us, in a remission of our sins, it makes sense as you read the book of Acts and see the transition from Peter to Paul. It's where Paul's ministry started. Paul's ministry was the message, the sermon. God started with Peter to take the truth to the Jew to accept their Messiah and They rejected him. Chapter 7, when uh, even Stephen was stoned. And that's when God said, Okay, Jew, you're resisting the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. You don't allow the gospel, so I will allow the gospel to go to the Gentiles. From going through the book of Acts, you see the transition from receiving the baptisms from the Holy Spirit and not from water baptisms. Water baptisms is not for salvation. To Paul, the most important thing was effectively the gospel and no water, not water. That's what the Bible teaches Again, the transition is believing in the name who Jesus is 
But in that, in what Jesus did for us, trusting in the gospel, now what happens in the early church? We go to Act 15. Peter says that we believe that we are saved by grace through faith. So what does it mean? That means the law does not save us. Look over the entire chapter of the book of Acts. It's only grace through faith, no circumcisions, no works, no water baptisms, no law. And in Acts 16:20, uh, pardon, 16:30-31, they spoke the word of eternal salvation through faith in Christ. And Philip, in the book of Acts, reading the Bible, Philip is this Enoch, answered uh, in the book of Acts, he said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then going a little bit down, then Philip opened opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they come unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water. What of hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If to believest with all thine heart, to mayest, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came, they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord couch with Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way with Joseph. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. But Philip was preaching to the eunuch, and saying, Jesus is the blood atonement, the law, the lamb, to the slaughter. We see also the other form of the gospel that was preached. Philip, led by the Spirit, is now going to the chariot and stay near it and give the unit to understand that there now, If you want to be saved, you have to be baptized. And he baptized him in water. But Jesus Christ is our blood sacrifice. That's what they began to preach. And also definitely what Paul preached. The book of Acts is more than chapter 30, verses 36. If you continue... In the book of Acts, you will see that Paul says it's by faith and not by water baptisms that we get saved. So in the book of Galatians, God revealed into Paul the gospel. It wasn't revealed to him by man, but by the revelation of God. And this is that we got saved, but what Jesus did, we are saved by the gospel, by the work of Christ. Paul was given by God the revelation that it's not to believe that he is the Messiah. It's to believe his blue determined is the way to heaven. No more law, no more animal sacrifices. Trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are coming to the. Uh, we go back to Galatians two, uh, chapter two, verse two, and chapter thirteen as well. We see in uh, parallel with the chapter thirteen of Acts, it is the early church. Let's let's 
go back to see what the early church is doing. And St. Paul was sitting there as the early minister. It's where his uh, minister really developed, he's developed his minister in this chapter. Now we go uh, to Peter preaching to the Gentiles, Paul preaching to the Gentiles as well, and we see we are saved by faith. And they are preaching what he did and not who he was anymore. They are preaching what he did for salvation. You have to know who Jesus is for sure. Just because you know what the, that Jesus is the Messiah, it doesn't mean you're saved. What saves you is to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Trust the gospel. It's just to trust what he did for you in your place to forgive us our sins, the forgiveness of our sin. He took everything, past, present, and future. So God sent Paul now to Jerusalem for a specific purpose. It was that uh, all the early church uh, can meet together and see that's no longer the law that saves. It's by believing by faith what was again the gospel that was uh, that Paul preached. That's exactly what's describing in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 4. It is the death, burial, resurrection of the Messiah according to the scriptures. So Paul went to the Gentiles and said, Jesus Christ died for our sin. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures in remission of our sins. He died for us, for our sins. So let's go back to uh, Galatia. God revealed so much to Paul. He revealed so much to him that he didn't reveal to any other body, anybody else. That's why Paul is our apostle for today. Even Peter said that some things that Paul says that are hard to understand. On his ministry journey, Paul preached the Gentiles this. Trust the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Trust his, his shed blood. Trust his finished work. And then he said, look, this is what, this is what God told me. He revealed to me that this is the way you are saved. Now, it is believing the death and burial, resurrection. Then the other apostle accepted this news and trusted in the work of God. That's why when we see Act 15, Peter stands up and says, we are saved by grace to faith, plus nothing, minus nothing. Verse 3 says, but neither Timothy, when we see Timothy that was, uh, Timothy was with me, Paul speaking, completed to be in the, the process of the, the circumcision. But now to many people, it is something confusing. Because verse 3 is clear that Timothy got circumcised. He's getting the circumcision. Paul is doing this. It may appear as a contradiction in the Bible, but it's not. The Bible is the word of God, and there's no confusion with God, and is no man that he should lie. Paul went in Act 15 to say, we are not saved if we are circumcised. But then Paul takes Timothy and circumcises him. Why? Let's go to Act 16 to find out. That's a little thing that is uh, demonstrate that there's no, no confusion in the world, in the work. And 
Nido with God.